we hear so much negative about open defecation right so this is like the the pits of the bane of our indian culture uh, and all it seems actually like that's a where the space of is available where uh, you know the geographical location permits it it's not fully open from what you were saying it they used to actually dig up it and do yes. it so in in when done in that way it seems to be the most uh, scientific and appropriate method of uh, disposal yes. uh, in and those times yes it was definitely scientific because remember the population was not much so in those days because today we see the thing is it was suitable for those times because villages were uh, far apart so they could find a place far away and do their job and it wouldn't affect them it wouldn't come back to them all that uh, you know those uh, what you call them when the bacteria is decomposing it and all that wouldn't come back to hurt hurt them it wouldn't come it wouldn't come back into their food but uh, now i mean today it's not relevant but in those days it was definitely very scientific right right okay now now that we've talked about how they handled it in ancient india what was happening in other parts of the world around the same time so in other parts of the world also they started with open defecation uh, initially but then after that they discovered that you know let's have these toilets where we can do this uh, do it in a privacy and then let get somebody to do it uh, somebody to physically carry it off so that's how this whole concept of night soil came night soil means you know uh, people who would come in the night and take it away so until um, as late as the 20th century the human excrement Uh, in the cities they used to be removed physically from the cesspits it was called cesspits and privies in uh, europe europe you know all this london and all they had those people uh, coming and collecting it from the houses now the interesting thing is they had something called the miasma theory in europe until very recently miasma theory it is now an uh, obsolete theory which is completely defunct but what they believed was that diseases are caused by bad air or bad smell foul odors so they thought that if you remove the bad smell from your house then you are going to be fine you are going to be sick so that's the thing you asked earlier you know about the flush toilets uh, the reason why they became popular it was because of the uh, miasma theory uh, so the uh, the the londoners were very happy when the flush toilets were introduced because they thought we are sending the smell away from the house so that's going to make us very healthy and strong uh, so they did not understand that if this excreta Uh, you send it away, but you send it to the Thames, Thames River, which is flowing through your city. Then it is going to hurt your come back to your drinking water. They didn't know that. In fact, they thought the more you send the waste to the Thames River, the safer it is for the residents. So it's very funny that you know the, the London's administrators, you know the sewer, sewer, sewer commissioners, whatever they were called, they were proudly announcing that a large volume of um, human waste has been sent from London uh, houses to the city. Uh, from the city's toilets has been deposited in the river and they are actually telling you this much uh, tons of uh, waste we have deposited in thames river so now we are going to be safe so when when cholera broke out in london in 1832 they did not understand it was because they were flushing their excreta into the river uh, and then in fact the sale of flush toilets went up when cholera broke out more and more toilets were sold flush toilets which were sending uh, the waste into the thames and and imagine this was in the 19th century whereas we in india already knew what the ancient uh, text was saying that rivers should not be polluted right and uh, so that's how in the 1900s uh, they understood that we need to have treatment plants when they realized they finally they finally made the connection that cholera was being caused because uh, we are sending waste into the very river from where we take drinking water that's when finally the treatment plants came about in the 1900s the treatment plants came up which treated the sewage before uh, discharging it into the river and that's how the whole subject of sanitary engineering or public health engineering wastewater engineering all these subjects developed as a result of that and then it became a discipline of uh, civil engineering that's what i studied it's it's amazing right that you you know they thought it was okay even if you drank some of it Hmm. Uh, and consume some of it as long as you don't smell it yes it you remain healthy yes. so um 
that's yeah. what they thought until the 1900s that was what they were doing and unfortunately then this whole uh, you know uh, practice of polluting rivers was wholesale you know imported and uh, you know into india and took root and now you know it's that, it's is, that is mainstream now that is mainstream so right. we have got this is what we have in all the cities now where we are using water to take away our waste and then we are spending so much money to treat it the treatment plants if at all we are treating it that's what it is right 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 um so it the one more uh, little uh, sort of spin off though not directly about just the the waste handling so it it seems like there has been a marker of upper versus lower in society based on this you know people who deal with the waste you know have na- naturally been sort of assumed uh, and treated as a lower uh, group of people uh, is that true in societies we know this in india that it in bharat it happened but is that true uh, elsewhere as well you mentioned that you know they used to have these uh, in london they used to have these uh, cesspits that needed to be cleaned and a sort of manual scavenging there too so was that true there also absolutely in fact it was even more pronounced over there the the the, the hierarchy because the european lower caste people they were the ones who did the dirty job of you know removing the toilet waste and there was a name for them they were called gong formos gong formos the many other names night soil people all those things. in america they were called night soil people by the way not just london in america also if you go back to uh, you know the early years of america when the colonizers were already in america it's the same system that they took from london uh so uh, so the system was that they were only allowed to work at night these gong formos they should not be seen in the city during the day that was the rule if anybody saw them during the day then they, they would have to pay fines the gong formos so this is nothing but the caste system and uh, so they the, these night men the gong formos they came into the respectable neighborhoods in the middle of the night uh, when everybody is sleeping that's when nobody should see them right so they would come and they would take away all this waste uh they would put it in a cart uh, you know they would have drums and all in which to carry it and then they had to live in the uh, the fringe of the city they had to be outside the city limits and they could not enter during the day so basically all over the world until the modern systems of transportation and handling the uh, sewage and sludge came you know advanced technologies until they came the caste system was rampant obviously those who are living in nice neighborhoods do you think they would want to sit for dinner with these people who are coming and taking away all their waste and dealing with it who who are not even allowed in the city during daytime do you think they were mingling with them so this was the U- european caste system very well developed european caste system uh, and that is why when they came to india they were looking for a caste system similar to theirs that's why they started calling ours as the caste system whereas actually ours was uh, was the varna jati system it wasn't based on the the way they were looking at it so ours was more uh, nuanced uh, the system that we had and later when of course all this came into our all these toilets and all this another you know this dirty more dirty jobs were introduced in india as well which were demeaning jobs yeah um and we've already talked about you know open defecation you know which is used to denigrate indians and bharati civilization a lot um we've talked about how that made sense in the ancient context but now that we are here what do you think is the way forward you know because i mean is how um, you you were earlier saying that a lot of sewage is still not treated how prevalent is that is that still something that's occurring now in and in only in certain undeveloped countries or underdeveloped countries or across the board i wanted to uh, show you something oh i just wanted to show you this main drain in uh, the harappan civilization right the drains that were carrying yeah so developed countries they also have sewage issues for example you know uh, what they have is a combined sewer in which uh, both the sewage goes into those pipes and also the rain water <laughs> so in times of uh, heavy uh, flood you know when there is heavy heavy rainfall then there is too much of that all the in that pipe so the in the sewer and the treatment plants are not able to handle so much so that time everything is just straight away goes into the nearest water bodies so developed countries have this problem because they have uh, they don't have separate systems for sewage and separate for rain water like they don't have a nala which carries only rain water and they uh, a separate uh, sewer for only the 
uh, the, the what comes out of the toilets and all that everything is mixed up so because of that what happens uh, uh, if there is heavy rainfall then that time it's too much the treatment plants cannot treat all that so they they send the excess to the rivers so th this this picture uh, is from virginia in 2017 this is america where they were dumping uh, sewage of course i've written last major source of uh, untreated that means they still hadn't uh, built the treatment plant yet or something like that but the thing is even now like every other day whenever we have all this like hurricane harvey happened in america all those hurricanes when they happen or even uh, flooding happens in uh, europe anywhere you we, they tell you these do not come in contact with the water because that water can cause skin infections and uh, diseases and all that that's because that water is overflowing the whole the sewage and the rainwater mixture is overflowing it's coming into the streets it is going into the the, uh, the rivers it is going into the seas so this is a huge problem even in the developed countries uh, and in the uh, uh, lesser developed country the bigger thing the problem is that they have a mix of both uh, so you have those people who are doing open defecation who who, who don't have toilets uh, so they are doing it out in the open and they are not doing it in the vedic way also in the shastric way where they have to cover it up and all that or washing their hands they're not doing that so they are falling sick and then on top of that the cities are discharging all their uh, their waste which is going into rivers without proper treatment so this is the problem that i wanted to highlight and i also wanted to show you a picture of this night soil workers the gong farmers i told you they went from house to house some of them carried it in their hand uh, in on their arms like this the buckets with all the waste some of them had huge uh, carts in which they would carry a lot of a lot of these buckets would be kept and they would be driven away so these are the european low cost uh, cleaners yeah so what was your question uh, so the way you know how, how should we move forward now that you know we, we have such a large population and this hmm. a lot of human waste what would you think are good solutions for this uh, so you see now what has happened we have got locked in into a wrong paradigm so we are all living in cities where the sewer networks are there to carry our waste water from the toilets so the wrong model of sanitation has got hardwired in our big cities so um, so here it is difficult to make major changes except maybe we can reduce the water we are using for flushing uh, but what we can actually do right is in those parts of the world where there are no uh, sewer networks like in the small towns and villages right in india maybe even in uh, america may wherever there are small towns which don't have sewers there we can try to introduce the decent uh, centralized sanitation the off grid solutions right so um, the most environment friendly toilet is the eco san toilet the, the ecological sanitation toilet the composting model so in which if the urine is collected separately and the and the solid is solid waste is collected separately because you see urine has all those nutrients which are extremely valuable for uh, as fertilizers for plants for plants animal for plants and crops so uh, urine can be used as fertilizer and the solid waste has to be composted uh, after that that can also be used for soil improvement urine can just be diluted and used you know so uh, this will recycle the material in the urine and prevent it from getting into the groundwater uh so uh, there is research going on in this the uh, the gates foundation uh, was quite well known the gates foundation they they conducted something called the reinvent the toilet challenge so they threw a challenge to researchers around the world to develop innovative and financially profitable uh, systems to manage the human waste so they they said that you develop a toilet which will be off grid and at the same time cost very less maybe 5 cents a day so that's a huge challenge people are millions of dollars have been awarded to researchers to develop that uh, those solutions so there are many prototypes that are there but uh, they you know which they so you do your job in the toilet and it converts into fertilizer and energy those things are being developed for the big cities uh, but they're not being they're not ready to be rolled out in the big cities in the cities that we live in but what we can learn is from the cities like japan uh you know i mean sorry countries like japan they japan has uh, achieved the goal of sanitation for all through a combination of centralized and decentralized uh, systems so they have uh, something called the jokaso in, in, J in japanese which is a packaged um, aerated wastewater treatment system uh, which they are using in the, in those smaller towns so they have got very strict rules you know regular desludging is done 
otherwise it won't work regularly those there has to be this sludging from those households which have the uh, the small uh, packaged uh, treatment systems and uh, this is you know they have used private sector and they have also they, they have incentivized it they have turned all those earlier night soil workers used to take those uh, collect the waste they have turned them into entrepreneurs so they are do, using high technology to do all this so that's the way we have to uh, think of doing it now in our indians uh, villages for example now uh, the swachh bharat abhiyan has already done a fantastic job they have introduced all these decentralized systems in the villages they have the twin pit latrines right uh, so where uh, i've seen some of them you know where villagers are using uh, and then you know what the what were when they uh, defecate it goes into one pit uh, and it keeps collecting in that pit for a certain period 6 months or whatever and then it turns into fertilizer and they have to empty it physically or they have to get somebody to empty it and put it in the fields and use it as a fertilizer and when one pit gets filled then the other pit starts getting used so this is also something like uh, you know what the japanese people are doing except that the japanese one is very high tech and uh, even uh, you know uh, people in the cities would not mind adopting it they look quite good so those are the things we need to look at in the future this is what you we need to do uh now i believe i what i believe is that if the indians had stayed connected with their uh, ancient knowledge then you know they would have naturally gravitated towards this eco sand toilets and decentralized sanitation because you know that was the way we were thinking already so our toilets would have been generating fertilizers or bioenergy from the waste that's the kind of modern toilet you would have uh, developed for sure because we were going in that uh, direction because i don't think we would have developed a system which sends the waste water into ganga and the yamuna that's not something which we would have come up with it's because we got colonized that we went along with what the european world was using and we just adopted that uh, so you know if today we have to develop shastrik guidelines and i will say that it has to be the practice of not mixing the human waste with clean water that is very important not sending waste water to fresh water bodies and ensuring that the nutrients are recycled in nature and trying to generate energy so those are the models of uh, sanitation that uh, we would have uh, we should have been adopting but maybe we can do that for the towns and the villages those are my thoughts very very interesting um, i hope uh, you know we don't know where uh, you know who gets interested in what things but this is a big challenge for humanity that uh, needs more minds working at it and uh, you know more people popularizing it so um you know who knows that we have several students watching and maybe they'll you know with this shastrik knowledge that we hope they'll acquire uh, by studying at agastya gurukulam we um hope that uh, maybe they will contribute in this or other ways to to the benefit of humanity um and uh, we have a couple of questions i'm just going to um take a couple of minutes to talk about our upcoming summer camps just in case parents here um have not heard about it agastya gurukulam has summer camps open for all um the india camp is uh, enrolling and is going to start very soon um i think in about uh, a week time so not this week but the next week um may 24th that's when the india camp starts um it's a two week camp so and it has a lot of uh, interesting uh, shastra related things that uh, you know children who whether they've been exposed to it before or not um will learn and benefit from so th- those who haven't enrolled their children i would uh, recommend taking a look at that we also will have a us summer camp because this vacation periods are staggered between india and the us we have that uh, at, at a later uh, time in the us that's going to be in either uh, you know the last week of july and early august or in august um, so please look out for that if you belong to the us uh, uh, time zone and if you belong to the india uh, closer to the india time zone you may want to look at our camp coming up very soon now let's go to some of the questions that have come up so the first one is from uh, one of our uh, students uh, shiva teja from our um, vakya varga what about the use of septic tanks which are contained and have a boundary 
when did that begin is that a good alternative yeah the septic tank is actually a decentralized uh, solution uh, but it is a good alternative only if it is maintained properly uh, so uh, so you know uh, i'm not sure exactly when it began but uh, the thing is that it was not being operated very well uh, earlier you know because septic tanks get full when there is a whole lot of uh, waste then you have waste water there uh, and then you have to empty it from time to time the desludging has to happen if that doesn't happen then it will be more of a problem than a solution so that japanese system that i mentioned to you it is that they all have that uh, those systems which are like septic tanks uh, but what they do is that from time to time they have a, a they you know a, a kind of a, a a truck comes there pulls it all up you know picks for, takes it all out from there and then takes it to the uh, treatment plant the de the decentralized treatment plant and then it converts that into fertilizer and all that uses them for gardens and all that so we need to have a proper system which uh, then you can use this uh, whatever nutrients are there in our waste uh, and then you can uh, apply it again send it back to nature so that that thing yeah the, i mean septic tank is not a bad concept at all but it needs to work well it has to be constantly managed somebody has to be looking at, into it and seeing whether the bacteria is doing the job because bacteria is what does the main job in the septic tank right it has to break down those organic solids into uh, useful substances so somebody has to be watching the bacteria is not like an automated thing you keep doing this job sometimes you know the te temperature is not right something is not right and you have to set it right all those things have to be taken care of okay um and then we have another question from uh, um one of the parents of uh, um, our students jagan ji from california so i heard about the sewage system in kanchipuram prior to the british administration where waste was naturally processed and used for gardens um could sahana ji elaborate on this i maybe don't know specifically about kanchipuram but uh, i i won't be surprised before the uh, british came uh this was all there i mean definitely people were knowing that they can use it uh, they can use the there was no i don't think there was sewage you called it uh, i don't think there was a system whereby water was uh, the toilet waste was being taken in uh pipes and uh, that's not sewage what you're talking about maybe is the waste so from the uh, uh, toilets maybe the whatever was carried the sludge from there maybe was being processed and uh, uh, used for gardens that was very much possible because in india we knew that can be done that we need to reclaim whatever is there in the waste the waste is not waste the waste has something useful in it that was understood uh, actually it was also known in other parts of the world right? that's why they were uh, doing that right uh, people were collecting it but somehow for some reason when the flush toilet came uh and it was uh, water started getting used so they just got uh, totally mixed up on that and they thought thought that we can just send it to the rivers and everything will be fine so there was something there was some knowledge but looks like it wasn't in a shastrik form like we had where it is actually mentioned clearly i don't i'm not seen that in uh, other cultures great and uh, i we have uh, uh, posted the um the link for the children's summer camp so for parents who are interested it's in the chat box you can use that uh, are there any other questions for sahana ji we are just about to reach the end of the hour we started a few minutes late so we're just about at one hour any other questions from anyone so when they are formulating the questions i just want to say one more thing that uh, this swachh bharat is not a new concept because that's your That was the title. Yes, it's it's a very very ancient concept. So we just, uh, I think, uh, you know, the government is uh, has done a fantastic job. The uh, Indian government in recent times to build uh, so many toilets. There are now almost hundred million toilets uh, in India. Uh, but the biggest challenge that they are facing is to uh, get people to use the toilets because those who are used to open defecation, uh, they 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 need to change. The, they need to have a change of mindset. They need to know that. what their ancestors were doing at that time was correct but today it is not correct so they should not be doing it in the open they have to use toilets so that mindset change is not happening because the you know the messaging has to go but the indian government has done a lot i mean they have really really spent a lot of money to get that messaging out but what i wish is that they would tell them that uh, you have to connect with your own ancient knowledge 
So what we are telling you is actually to reconnect with your ancient knowledge. And that's why you should not be defecating in the open now. So the same uh, thinking which made us do that open defecation in the past, according to the same thinking, now we have to do it in the toilet. That yeah. messaging is not coming out too well, I think. Right. With, with, the, with the evolution of uh, the human situation and yeah. population, it's hard to find uh, spaces away from habitation, sufficiently away for so many people to allow right. open defecation. And this is something that uh, I guess people don't realize or understand. Correct. Um, so I have another question uh, asking about kitchen waste. But any, you know, how was kitchen waste disposed in ancient India? Any uh, clues but to I, that? I have a, uh, what I have seen, of course, is that they used to give it to the livestock. I mean, those days, if you remember, whatever was all the kitchen, the, the vegetable peelings and those things, you know, they used to be fed to the cows, be fed to the animals. So there was that kind of cycle also there where we, you know, there was no special animal feed which was prepared. Like today we have all those, uh, the cows are fed some feed. Uh, but we, it was very naturally going, uh, whatever was sit over from the kitchen was going into the, uh, being fed to the animals. So that's what I, I know of. Maybe they were also converting that into uh, other things because, you know, these are enzymes. There are enzymes in the kitchen base which can be used for cleaning. They can also be used as cleaners. Uh, so that also was possibly being done. They were, uh, you know, for probably fermenting it and using it as cleaners as well. So there might have been various options because they had so much knowledge uh, and they, they just knew the working of nature very well. Which we have um, with our uh, urban and uh, westernized uh, sort of living, we've lost some of that. Yeah, so what, right. what I would love to see is that we, redis we rediscover these things and maybe right. we can get new patents out there, you know. So just like what we are seeing in, you know, like uh, uh, this Manjul Bhargava in mathematics, what he did is he went back to the ancient works on mathematics, right? And he discovered new ways of using it. So maybe that's how we can also, if we read, if Manusmriti can give you this much, there are many other texts which will have something that will give you, will spark ideas for innovation. That's what I feel. And this precisely is the idea behind Agastya Gurukulam. This is why we feel it's important for children to be learning our Shastras and, you know, so that we have our future innovators, future thinkers who will be inspired by um, several of these gems hidden in our Shastras that we've lost, uh, our generation has not really learned. So that was, uh, I think that is all in terms of the questions. That was a very interesting hour. Um, I, I did not, um, you know, before I came across uh, your uh, work on this, I did not uh, think that sanitation would be such an interesting topic, you know, and that there was so much about it in our uh, uh, Shastras. So it, it's been a real pleasure having you here, Sahanaji. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much you. for inviting me. Thank you for, to all the parents and uh, um, viewers who stayed with us. Um, we'll, we'll have uh, uh, future rounds of Chai Pe Chacha where we hope to see you. Thank you again, Sahanaji. Namaste. Thank you.